tuning again. Ons is blij om so baie mense te sien. Dit is nou moest nou verandering gewees. Hier is moest nou baie grijskoppe gewees, ouwer mense. We start with Nico, I think we start with you. Ja, baie, baie dankie, baie dankie dat hier so klompie mense is, sonder dat ons verskrikkelijk wat verteer. Toe ons besluit het oor die thema koalitie realiteit, was ons motivering dat die tyd van nou tot met die 2029 verkiesing gaan waarschijnlijk baie bepalend wees ten opzichte van hoe die Zuid-Afrika gaan lyk wat die jeug by ons gaan erf. En toe het ons nou een klompie mense wat graag hierover wil praat, so is Teens Elof al gesê en hy bespreek vir oktober, jou andere sou kom in september praat, maar toe het ons besluit wat ons moet ophou om net oor die jeug te praat, kom ons praat met die jeug. En dat is waarom we ask these young people to come and spend with us some time. Strictly, they say they can keep to five minutes each. And if this is successful, I think we will do this type of thing more. I must stress that that the the young people here only speak for themselves, not for the institutions that they. Uh, work for, so they, they, repre they represent just themselves and the future. Thank you. Yeah, Adam Lowe, uh, maybe, yeah, but most of the people here, I saw you studied uh, at Takis, but with the exception of the Wits person and I think Academia, but mostly Tux, glad to see that. Adam is currently busy with his PhD in political science, so maybe that is why he said he wants to speak first, I'm not sure. Maybe. And then we have um, uh, Riani. Riani, that's right. Riana, legal professional. Professional. Uh, Susan Procurier. Okay. And then uh, Michelle, lawyer, legal consultant. Yeah, in our council. Yeah. In our council, good. And then we have uh, Jean Rey, entrepreneur. Well, that means, what does that mean? Probeer geld maak, of baie van die jong mens het moest deels dat contract werk, jy werk een bykie daar en werk een bykie daar. Law student, maar jy is swat nog, ok, law student, so that's your vision. Ek moet geld maak vir artikels. Vir artikels. En dan is vir Nsaku Mafali hier, of your son I'm correct, Mafali, Mafali, Nsaku is a doctor, medical practitioner, so as ons bykie siek voel vanavond van die kost is nie lekker nie, then we've got a doctor here, so we can feel more safe in what we eat tonight. And then Eugene Fasa, 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 Pasha, he is computer science professional, he's the wits guy. And Eugene, you said you want to speak last, but it's fine, you can speak last. So this is the audience. I think it's going to be, uh, be very interesting. I think afterwards I, I said to all of them, not six minutes, five minutes. So I'll be uh, Sergeant Major here for the five minutes. And afterwards, as usual, we ask the questions. And I was thinking if you don't know what to ask, then maybe they can ask questions between themselves. So maybe because they don't really know each other. I think there's only two people here that really know each other. So for the first speaker, Adam, up to you, my friend. Good luck. So I thought about speaking first, uh, not because of any like particular reason. I just sort of wanted to get it maybe over and done with and hear what the rest have to say. Uh, but I also decided to kind of come with a bit of pessimism tonight, right? Uh, and hopefully you guys can pick up the optimism later on. But I want to speak about South Africa having a path-dependent kind of character, right? And what this means is that generally our politics is rather predictable. If we look at the 1994 elections, we had about a 60-20 split vis-a-vis uh, -vis the number one and two political parties. If we look at 2014, it's pretty much identical, 60-20. Um, this is obviously an interpretation um, of our party system. We have a multi-party system, but I would go so far as to say that we have a two-group multi-party system. On the one side, getting about 60% of the vote each election, we have our racial majority group, and at the other side, at around 20%, we've got the collection of racial minorities. 
Uh, political scientists had long remarked that South Africa has a sort of a racial census. They've called our elections that because you can kind of, you know, predict on the basis of party loyalties, which are usually proxies for racial identification, uh, what it will be. So some political scientists have checked or have seen that this is slightly diminishing. But I will argue that path dependency will overpower these minor changes. So these minor changes are that increasingly race is not as big of a predictor for who you will vote for in an election. Class is rearing its head, but functionally the race class nexus is, you know, um, it's, a, it's a Venn diagram with a large overlap. So I think that functionally we're not going to see much change. Uh, second of all, we're seeing that there are newcomer political parties. I think the biggest one here uh, is Action SA. We're going to see them doing pretty well, well, I don't know, about four to seven seats in the next election. Patriotic Alliance, Musi Mamani's new party, Build One South Africa, uh, Shiluva, Bongani Baloy's party. I think that he's got a big draw, right? That midfall, the young mayor there, um, and a clean audit under his belt, which is quite nice. Uh, very nice, actually. And then we have Rise Mzanzi, right? So these are just a couple of the new political parties that we're going to see, you know, quote unquote, dark horses. But I, as I argue, I don't think it's going to change our path dependent character. Uh, thirdly, we've got a growing populist ecosystem on various fronts, right? In the ANC, you had your emphatic populism under Jacob Zuma. It's no longer a big deal within the ANC, but we see a lot of splinter parties forming in the wake of his drama, we can say. Uh, you know, the big one here is Karl Niehaus's uh, Areta, something, something, R-E-T in the name. Um, but the EFF is increasingly also trying to tap in through the populism of Malema into this disillusion, what we can call a Zuma electorate, right? Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but Mzwanele or Jimmy Mani has now entered parliament, number four on the EFF's list. So unseating people who have been in that party for 10 years, right? Uh, they're also in apparently advanced stages of getting Ace Marashule into the EFF as well. Right? So we're seeing this attempt by the EFF to co-opt the disillusioned pro-Zuma votes. Um, and in civil society, we've got all sorts of populists of all stripes. Right? You're xenophobic or nativist or patriotic, depending on your own inclinations. Uh, uh, what are these guys? Operation Dudula, Put South Africans First. We've got organizations like the Solidariteit Beweging, Afri Forum which also make these claims on who the people are and who the elite are that are um, going against the people, so to speak. This elite, non-elite divide. But all of these different populist groupings have a different kind of you know, sense of who, um, who is part of the people and who is part of who we need to blame, right? So these are changes we're seeing, but I would argue that path dependency will overpower any of these changes being actually meaningful. Uh, why? The first big reason is that all of these newcomers are sort of playing into the same discourse uh, which forms the political culture that we currently have, right? The 60-20 split. Um, if you look at COPE and the EFF, in the coalitions at local level, they govern with the party they apparently split from, right? So these splits are not big enough to prevent that 60-20 kind of division I mentioned at the beginning. The second reason is the shape and the structure of our electoral system. You guys might know that we have a new electoral system, new legislation. Um, don't bother checking out what it's going to do. I don't think it's going to change at all. Independents can contest. I don't think we will see one independent in the National Assembly. They are greatly disadvantaged, which is no surprise that the parliament, you know, is going to change the rules that got them elected there in the first place, right? So we've got these two big factors. One. We keep talking the same talk. It's the same talking points, even with apparently new parties. And number two, the, the limitations placed on how we actually go about electing our government, right? So I don't think that much is going to change, which is maybe good because our coalitions working where we have them, I think the answer is no, right? We see very eclectic combinations across the board in these metros that have coalitions. Uh, and there's no sense of consistency all of these political parties are disappointing their voters, each other, themselves, God, all of these things. Um, and yeah, maybe this uh, pessimism can be tempered with some optimism from the, the colleagues up here and from you guys over there. Um, but likely what we're going to see, what I'm thinking we're going to see is the ANC retaining their majority. And even if they do dip below 50, 
I don't think it will be big enough for them to be forced into a coalition with the EFF or the DA, right? Okay, so that's mine, thanks. So I ask, I can't coalition is then, then then gag, is that a dual to the middle for a better shot of the goal? Of is that on the oblong sign? And um, <laughs> I get my book to say, a coalition is not as evil. It is difficult to get to the end of the day. I want to escape, but it is a difficult way to get to the path to go. What is the other person's right to be able to get to the path? And what is your actual path? And I think, as a South African, we have a middle way to go to the path and to go to the path and to go to the path. So, in the end, is there not really any information about the regulations in the place? wat um, koalities reguleer of woorde stil staan nie. En um, ek denk, dit is raarig iets waar mens kan inkijk om te sê, daar moet of iets geskep word om koalities te maak werk. En, um, maar aan die andere kant, dan vroeg mens, wil ons het eindelijk hee? Wil ons eindelijk gebond hier daar wees? So, ek gaan ek oorst gaan in Engels. <laughs> um, political parties need to adhere to and give effect to coalitions they enter into. There should be some stability within coalitions. Um, for example, where you have what happened in Nelson Mandela Bay, where the EFF said, if they won't be adhered to their demand, they will pull from the coalition in NLMU, as well as in Johannesburg. And um, we must really stop that from happening. So if there is no regulation and laws on how coalitions should be governed in South Africa, maybe we should look at coalition agreements. This will assist with inter and intra-party com commitments, um, and this is one measure to safeguard the longevity of coalitions that's formed in our political world, as parties can't just back out of coalitions if they have any disagreement. However, the feasibility of coalitions also depends on the willingness and participation of the parties working together and to find common ground. Political parties must negotiate and reach consensus on policy issues, distribution of power, and decision-making processes. The success of coalition relies on the ability of parties to engage in constructive dialogue, build trust, and to commit to promises. Additionally, coalitions require effective communication, coordination, and management to ensure smooth governance and prevent conflicts or breakdowns. Strong leadership and clear mechanisms for decision-making and conflict resolution are essential for long-term viability. Coalitions can face disagreements or power struggles that may undermine the stability and effectiveness. If parties prioritize their individual interests over the collective interest and governance, the coalition cohesion and ability to implement policies may be compromised. It's worth noting that coalitions and common features in many democracies worldwide have proven to be successful. Ultimately, the feasibility and success of coalition depends on the specific political context, the parties involved, and their ability to navigate and the complexities of coalitions. Then, I think coalitions can be seen as a mirage as well as um, courage. Coalitions can be perceived as a mirage because they often involve parties compromising their individual interests and making concessions for the sake of forming government majorities. This can be challenging and may create the illusion that cooperative and unity are easily achievable. But in reality, cohesion building often requires significant effort, trust building, and ongoing collaboration to overcome differences and maintain the coalition stability. On the other hand, forming and sustaining a coalition can also be seen as courageous. It takes courage for political parties to set aside their differences and work together in a pursuit of shared goals and the betterment of governments. Coalition governments can provide an opportunity to represent a diverse interest and bring together different perspectives to address complex societal changes. So in summary, while coalitions can be seen as both a mirage and an act of courage, the reality lies somewhere in between. Coalitions require careful management, compromise, and ongoing commitment from all participating parties. They can offer opportunities for inclusive governments, but also face challenges 
that need to be overcome through courageous and determination leadership. So I need to thank God for him, like I said, definitely for doing the middle. And um, I think that can us bring one's youth leaders. So today we're discussing a critical topic that has the ability to shape the future of our nation. So with the upcoming national and provincial elections on the horizon, it's essential for us to recognize the immense potential of coalitions and the reasons why they should be a fundamental part of our political landscape. Coalitions, far from being a mirage, represent a courageous and necessary action towards a su successful South African government. In the past, the ANC has held a dominant position in, South, in the South African uh, political arena, governing the nation since the advent of democracy in 1994 and controlling most provinces and municipalities. However, times are changing. The ANC's majorities have been on the decline, especially in metropolitan councils such as Gauteng and Nelson Mandela Bay. This decline, coupled with the decreasing voter turnout, calls for new approaches and fresh ideas. Coalitions offer a promising solution to the evolving political landscape of a country. They allow for collaboration among diverse parties, bringing together different perspectives, expertise, and ideas. The diversity of thought is essential for robust decision-making, as it ensures that policies and legislation are thoroughly debated and, represent and representative of the various voices within our society. By embracing coalitions, we can foster a culture of inclusivity and consensus building which is vital for a vibrant and successful democracy. Coalitions also provide a platform for accountability. When power is shared among multiple parties, there is a built-in system of checks and balances, ideally, overcoming the limitations of single party dominance. No single party can dominate all aspects of, do of, of governance, which helps prevent the abuse of power and encourages transparency. Through collaborative efforts and various strengths of parties, who form part of the coalition, uh, these strengths can be leveraged. For example, ANC's experience and governance track record, uh, combined with the EFF's focus on economic transformation and social just justice, or the DA's commitment to market-oriented economic policies, pro-business measures, as well as its track record of governance in its stint as governing party of the Western Cape. By working together, they can address pressing issues such as land reform, wealth in in inequality, and economic empowerment through attracting investment, and economic em uh, which have long been at the forefront of South Africa's socio-economic and political discourse. Another positive is that coalitions can promote regional and minority representation. In a diverse nation like ours, it is crucial that the voices and concerns of all citizens are heard and addressed. By forming alliances across, across party lines, we can ensure that no regional group is marginalized or neglected. Coalitions provide a platform for smaller parties or those with specific regional focuses to have a seat at the table and actively contribute to the decision-making process. This inclusivity strengthens our democracy and ensures that governance reflects the true diversity of our nation. So, as we approach the upcoming elections, it is vital for us as young South Africans to be guided by experiences and lessons learned from past coalition governments to ensure that power struggles don't impede progress. We must look beyond individual party affiliations and instead focus on the collective goal of building a prosperous and inclusive South Africa. In conclusion, coalitions are not a mirage, but a courageous and necessary action toward a South African, successful South African government. And together we can build a nation that we are proud to call our own. Goeie naand, dames en heren. Nou, ek kom van die Noordkaap af, so jylle my maar verskoon. Ek het hier vier jaar van Shakespeare gegaan, maar verkies nog steeds maar my moedertaal, so ek gaan in Afrikaans praat. En um, vir die van jylle, ek denk nie, jylle dat al, van jylle dat al gaan gedoen nie, maar ek was so vijf jaar terug lang verveeld, en toe gaan kyk ek na die verdeling van kwalifikaties in die parlement vir die laaste 120 jaar. Nou, as jy bykie gaan kyk, uh, met uitsondering van verwoerd en PW um, tot en met 
die einde van Mandela was allemaal procureurs en advocaten. En uh, ek weet nie of het een probleem is nie, het was procureurs en dominees. Um, so het is in die twee, weet ek dit nie of het enig iets van ons land in die toekomst nie, maar ek sien ons het weer so een rij uh, advocaten en rechtslui en dan daarom die dokter om ons te red, as ons allemaal hard aan val gee. So, toe ek na die, um, die thema gekyk het, het ek besluit, en gehoop, dat ons politieke wetenskapelike vir ons baie goeie ontleding van coalities gaan gee, en ek het besluit, ek wil graag vanavond eerder focus op die gedagtes en die denken van die jong persoon wat gaan stem, die wat by die stem is gaan kom. So, my, my drie goed wat ek graag met julle bes, wil bespreek is, neem van die verlede, maar focus op die toekomst. Die tweede in is, die jeug van vandag is morgens die toekomst, so vertrou ons, en daar is geleentheid in verval. Nou, ek het voor in my gedachte hier gedeel dat baie van ons paas en oupas het onsaglike negativiteit oor toe dit die spoor weer was, toe dit gewerk, toe dit Fcom was, toe dit gewerk, toe dit die postdienst was, toe dit gewerk. So dit was of die taal um, of, of die feit dat daar verandering gekom het en dit het nie die verlede, dit het baie beter gewerk gister. Maar die realiteit is ons woord gebombardeer met die ding van gister was beter as vandag, maar ons vergeet van gisterse probleem en onthou dit wat goed is. Toe my pa sy plaas gekoop het, was die rentekoers 25%. Vandag, is het, die reservebank man kan vir ons precies kan sê wat het vandag is, maar dit is 11% of prima is 8. So, ons onthou, ons vergeet van die goeie is en ons onthou die slag. So, kom ons kyk na voor en toe, wat ons kan focus om om te werk. Uh, en dit is die gevoel van my en ek klomp van my vriende dat, hou asjeblief op om vertel vir ons hoe goed het was, kom ons kyk hoe ons het weer al kan uitkry, door te focus op die toekomst. Die heer van vandag is morgens is toekomst, nou, die realiteit is, die Suid-Afrika is die samenleving en vir al die Afrikaner gehuise sinne is, kinders is nie gehoor nie, hulle is gesien. So, ons word nie rechtig uh, geag in die meerderheid van gevallen om te sê, luister, dis wat ek voel nie, maar kom ons gaan kyk in na ons geschiedenis, ons geschiedenis is gemaakt dier die jeug, dis die jong touwleier wat voorgestap het by die oose waar, dis die jong MP en Shaka se leer wat by bloedrevier aan die ander kant was, dis die penkop op commando, dis die persoon wat gerebeleer het, dis die jong man wat die tweede wereld oorlog bereik het, en het was die persoon wat in 16 juni 1976 opgestaan het en gesê het, ek wil asjeblief vir my uh, moedertaal onderrug kry. Ons geschiedenis is gevormd dier die jeug, maar ons vergeet om onze kans te gee om die geschiedenis te maak, om die toekomst te maak. En die realiteit is, ons gaan die toekomst erf. Ten die tijd wanneer het waarlijke probleem is, dan is die wat nou ons onderdruk lang al nie meer daar om die problemen wat hulle waarschijnlijk geskep het te hanteer nie. So gee ons een kans om om een toekomst te bouwen. Laatst die een, as ek is entrepreneur, uh, soos wat hy gesê het, ek is eerst entrepreneur en dan is te denk, maar een vriend van my, wat sekerlik een van die persoene, die sakeman is, hy is so ontzaglik groot, maar niemand ken sy naam, of hy is nie op Volpse voorblad nie, een nacht met my oor een koffie gesê, Janre, ek het al geld oor see gestuur, ek het huis in Frankrijk, en as ek 100 miljoen oor see moet stuur, dan gaan ek 10% of 15% return kry op dit. As ek my 100 miljoen in Zuid-Afrika aanwend, dan krijg ek 20, 30%. Um, en ek vraag dan vir hom, hoekom? To, oh, nou het ek iets gebreek. Nou het ek iets gebreek. Ok. Ja, maar, kan ek een extra minuut kry? Ja, sorry. <laughs> ja, maar. Ja, nee, sorry. Die SAP, SAPS het um, 60.000 nieuwe inname elke jaar. Die private is... Ok, sorry. Nou is dit net een halve minuut. Nou is dit net een halve minuut, Esther. Nou is daar privaat... ...tijds in de strie en... ...en nog een minuut. <laughs> en Souler en uh, wat gebeur is, zodra dit slag gaan is daar die entrepreneurs wat die geleentheid neem om voor en toe te gaan. So in hierdie verval, wat ons gesien het, wat my gewaardeerde gespreksgenote na verwijs het, kom daar geleentheid na vore. En die realiteit is, kyk na die C, die hoofuitvoerende beamtes van die S&P 500, 
gaan kyk bykie wat is die ouderdom van die CEO's en vir al die technologische maatskapie, en dan gaan jy sien, dit is juist die jeug wat ons nou in die vorige punt die kans gegin is om te bouwen in die toekomst, uh, wat dan hierdie maats aan die voorfront is, om hierdie verval en hierdie geleentjede wat geskep word te lei na die toekomst toe. Ten slotte, ek het vir 360 mense gevra wat die selfde ouderdom as ek is omtrend, en 70 het toe daarom geantwoord, so dit is nie te sleg nie. Te vraag vir hulle, wie gaan stem? Nou, 81% het vir my gesê, hulle gaan stem. 3% het gesê, nee, nou ek gaan een bottle wijn saam met die persoon en gaan drink, en hulle oortuig, en dan 16% weet nog nie. Maar as ons denk, 80% gaan stem. Uh, my collega gaan pikkie praat oor die, um, na die getalle, 10 miljoen ongeregistreerde uh, stemme uit die, uit die jeug wat sy verskil kan het maak. En dan ten slotte, en hierdie maak my onsaglik opgewonde, en Adam, ek hoop dit is een teenvoeter vir jou, um, ek gaan nie optimist wees en sê, en ek het vir hulle gevra, is daar nog een toekomst vir die jeug in Zuid-Afrika? Want eindelijk is die politieke weerspieling van ons toekomst, en andersom, so as daar, is daar nog iets vir ons om aan moore te bou, of moet ons immigreer? 59% het gesê, ja, ek gaan bly en ek gaan bou. Dis mense wat onder 30 is. 9% het gesê, hulle wil so, so gauw as moeilik immigreer, en 32% het gesê, ek sal oor see gaan werk, maar ek sal altyd terugkom. En, en dit is, en dit saam is 91%. So, kom ons neem van die verlede, focus op die toekomst, geef vir ons een kans om aan die toekomst te bou, en laat ons daai geleentede in verval uitbuit. Baie dankie. Um, this is awkward. Uh, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Join the club. <laughs> That's why I type. <laughs> no, no, I can't. It goes with the degree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so the thing that I thought about initially when this was uh, presented, I spoke to Nico Senior, um, must be four or five months ago, about exactly this. What's the nature of the future? What's the landscape look like? The political hopes that um, I think so many of us have. Uh, your presence here shows active citizenry and it shows this idea of participation can lead to change, can change and shift the way you want to, to have things be. The outlooks are easy um, to swim. We, we know that. Uh, KFC in a t-shirt will give you a, a policy that is nonsensical. But the next day, once that uh, KFC has been digested, <laughs> all you have is cut. So <laughs> now we have this fantastic opportunity. And I think we've always had this. We've had this opportunity to have voices collectively represented um, and not only co collectively represented, but collectively understood, given credence, given power to say what you believe is true for your family, for your community, have that translated into policy and have those policies tested. Uh, if you fail fast, there's no problems. If you fail slowly and you learn nothing from it, you end up with uh, 28 years and a panel of six young people discussing how to change things. You, you, you have to always have this optimism about the, the thing you want to do has to be sincere. And if you have the sincerity, the optimism follows. That optimism is contagious. We will all have a million stories of fantastic, fantastic things that have happened in your lives. South Africa is beautiful. It's amazing opportunities, and we all have something to say about it. But if you go to the internet and you listen to the pundits, no one speaks of these beauties. No one speaks of the time you were in Coffee Bay and you saw the most beautiful sunset. No one speaks of the opportunities you've been given because someone said, hey, I remember your father in my class. Here's a chance to come and study with us. Here's a chance to grow your family, to grow your legacy. And if we continue with this negativity, <laughs> I think that's the problem with where we are now. We're consumed with only one question. How do I change the thing that's wrong? Not how do I become the thing that's right. With the numbers, yeah, the numbers are dismal. You, you don't have the opportunities for coalitions at a national level if the incumbent has the same showing as the last two elections. But at a provincial level, 
that's not necessarily true. It's not representative. And we don't have the opportunity to gerrymander the, the lines for the provincial lines to get us state representation that's actually representative of what the money is saying. So if you look at the metros where all the money is accumulated, the vision is nothing like what we're looking at at the national level. So how do you change that? How do you pivot that, let's say, discord? The discord between the real money that's actually making South Africa work, that's centered in the metros, and how do you translate the questions of the impoverished in the communities that no one speaks about? Kofim Vaba, which is 80 k's from East London. 80,000 people center in that population there's no representation at all in state or at provincial level for that community. So how do we grow consensus? How do we learn to listen when that consensus is reached? And how do we translate that consensus into policy? I hope, I hope that coalitions offer this one gap. And I don't think the coalitions are going to upset the total numbers. I think we're in, going to end up with another incumbent ANC led parliament but if we can strengthen the coalitions we have an opportunity to have despite that the overruling story is negative the individual experiences remain positive that we can grow our communities grow resilience and eventually when we do get a chance and i really hope Chandra is right here that the 10 million unregistered youth voters stand up and represent themselves that they do represent themselves in a different direction uh, i don't say I'm not saying that's a yes or no to any single party. Um, I think we have one of the strange problems. We don't have the lesser of evils, we have the evil of lessers. <laughs> a million options of mediocrity doesn't give a real alternative. There's no real growth or change. I, I applaud everyone who stands up and says, this is the problem, congratulations. Um, my eight-year-old can also do this. What I want to find is, that enthusiasm to say, how do I change it? Put your back into it and put your skin in the game. You know, I think staying is, is becoming less and less popular, especially in my field. Um, as some of you might have heard, a week or so ago, we had the NHI signed into power um, or signed into law, uh, which is a really interesting thing of shared delusion. <laughs> again, the numbers don't represent that. There's no way we can deliver that sort of care in the current system. But again, a coalition would be able to represent that better. Someone who is able, in a small sense, to say what is the special interest that needs to be amplified beyond what the total numbers show? What's the vision that we want to have? How do we deliver this vision? And how do we moderate as we're all moving through it? There's a few problems that we can all point at in the coalitions that exist right now. Tswani, uh, Johannesburg, yeah, Nelson Mandela Bay. The thing I think we're all forgetting is every time these businesses fail, because it is, government is a service delivery business. It's not a, a friendship. It's not a camaraderie, despite that it looks like a fraternity. It is a service delivery business. And every time you fail, those failures are counted in lives. That community in Kofim Vaba who does not get water, who doesn't get electricity, who has dysentery and those children dying, and with it is an opportunity to say, where is that growth going to come from? What's the next generation going to look like if we have this continuous decline? And the decline is at the feet of people who are muttering and trying to grab power. And if coalitions are a power grab, as we've seen in Johannesburg, it continues to be a detriment. But if they are something that allows us to have a representation of these small communities and small voices amplified through coalitions, then I think we really are into something special. Thank you. Tonight is a very interesting night. For starters, doctors get to feel how it is to not be able to read their handwriting. <laughs> and an IT geek can't use his phone now, so I'm going to have to rely on, on your clock. <laughs> So yeah, the good thing is that I, I'm speaking from the heart. This is a topic that, that really uh, sits on my heart and it's something that Nick and I had spent countless times talking about it. So uh, when technology does this, then it gives one an opportunity to really speak directly from 
the core of who and what they are. For me, when I look around the room and I look at myself and um, the panel today, I'm reminded that we as South Africans and Africans, we are a diverse nation and we're a nation that has gone through a lot. And we're a nation that still has a bright future to look forward to. And we're a nation that still has a lot to fight for. Usually in the news, we, we hear the pessimism that comes through when people say, no, I, I've, I've had it with this country. I've had it with this ESCOM situation. I'm leaving the country. I'm going to Australia or any other country for that matter. But that, for me, is an issue that shows that somewhere, somehow, we have forgotten the one thing that makes us one in this country. We have forgotten the one real reason why is it that we, 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 we exist and why is it that we, we, we can work together towards one common goal. And that is what I see with the current status in terms of the coalitions in this country. I'm quoting one of the scholars in this topic, Professor Mazwe Majola from the University of, of, of Johannesburg when he said, coalitions are a weapon used to cause disorder in this country for a political landscape. He's a political analyst. And what he was referring to was the fact that at this point in time, we find ourselves with a fragment, fragmented, fragmented, a fragmented opposition where we've got the main opposition and all the other smaller political parties are using every opportunities to gun at each other and to gun at the, 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 ruling, the, the ruling party. It is a situation that shows us that as we see, as we sit right now and what we're looking at, it is all doom and gloom in terms of coalitions with the current state because we're not fighting and we're not working together towards that one common goal. There was a situation, or there is a situation currently, where the rand was struggling against the dollar, despite the dollar itself uh, struggling. And from an investor point of view, investor confidence point of view, we had an opportunity as a nation to try and win that situation back so as to bring value to our own currency. And that was an opportunity for a whole lot of political parties to stand together and make statements in the media and make statements to investors that will bring back investor confidence. When that situation happened, we saw that the ruling party went and um, with the president leading a number of, 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 of African leaders, they went uh, to go and, and, and deal with the situation in terms of the war in Russia and Ukraine, or rather the, the war in, in Ukraine. That was an opportunity for us to stand together and especially for, for all the political parties to stand together. But it, then again, it showed that we are divided as a nation. And it's one of those things that for us to make it, and as I stand in front of you here, I stand as an optimist, and I side with the optimist that I've spoken today, that in this nation, the one thing that can really get us working together, especially from looking at the social economic differences that we, we come from, and the, 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 the backgrounds that we, 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 we come from, and also the different political landscapes that we find ourselves in, the only thing that can make us move forward is if we work together and have one common goal, which is to make South Africa great. As we stand today, South Africa is not where it used to be in terms of it being the economic powerhouse of this continent. We stand behind countries like Egypt, we stand behind Nigeria, we stand behind even a number of countries within the SEDEC region. And that is because there is no growth currently. Our economic growth was stagnating and that is because we are not moving together. And I stand here believing and passionate in my belief that coalitions are actually the glimmer of hope that we have. We just have to unite. We just have to uh, uh, 
uh, work together from a, 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 a coalition point of view and, 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 and work together towards that one common goal. Thank you. Ik heb nog een tijd voor heel met die mensen, wat daar is een baie, baie dankie. Wat voor mij positief is, is die hoop wat hulle daar gegeet. Ons leven vandaag in een constitutionele democratie. En als je mij buiten orde wil reel, is u welkom. Maar ik zou graag wil weten of jullie jong mensen denk dat die voertuig wat ons heet, wat een uitlikbare afgewaterde type van een westminister stelsel is, die stelsel is om ons voeren toe te vat in hierdie land, om die verschillende volkengroepen groepe saam te verenig en by mekaar uit te brengen. Is daar niet ander, beter, wetgevende, constitutionele vordering wat gemaakt wordt? Ik meen, daar kan een democratie wees daar, daar kan een federale stelsel wees, daar is eindeloos een opties daar. Is hierdie jong mensen bereid om met hierdie voertuig wat hulle nou het, gloe hulle, Hulle kan daar aan de andere kant uitkomen als ons lang al niet meer daar is nie. Uh, maar baie dank je wel voor, uh, as jy my bij de orde wil hee, want ek weet die opdracht wat hulle moet praten oor die begroting, oor die verkiezing daar. Baie dank u. Nee, nee. 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 Maar, maar, maar nou, jy, jy is nie buiten orde en jy is nie buiten orde wees as jy nou so baie lang gepraat het, maar jy het een goeie vraag gevraag. Jy het, wie wil dit antwoord? Hoe mens dit? Right, Adam. Uh, ek gaan dit antwoord met nog een vraag, so, want dit is iets wat jylle baie, ek denk, allemaal kind of gesê het, um, maybe nie allemaal nie. Um, maar hierdie vraag van hoe ons gaan verenig, ek okay, gaan my go back to English, I study in English, so forgive me. But, this talk about unity is all very good and very well, but it's 30 years old at minimum, right? It didn't work then, it didn't work now. How are we going to unify, right? Like, again, I'm not trying to be, I'm not someone who doesn't have hope at all. I just think that I want to put this spanner in the wheel because this is actually incredibly important, right? That we're not here paying lip service to unity as a lofty ideal, without actually, you know, because it's easy, guys, it's so easy to say we need to unify. It really is, but there's bread and butter issues that, that prevent this, right? I am of the opinion that we, we, won't, we won't unify. I mean, apartheid as a piece of legislation is gone, right? Um, you've got your Aaron's Roots type sort of saying that, no, it's returned, there's however many laws, blah, 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 blah. Um, but when we all wake up in the morning, right, and you see people taking public transport or taxis, it's, you know, how many, 160 kilometers per day, it's not everyone doing that, right? It's not all of the race groups kind of going to and go clean other people's houses and things like that. And these material conditions inevitably and invariably play into how we do our politics. Uh, without attending to that, talk of unity is this idealistic, you know, tutuism, right? Form a rainbow nation because it'll be cool. 30 years down the line, nothing, right? I was born in 1998. There's nothing real, you know, on that front, except in the types of schools I was privileged enough to go to, right? That's where you do get genuine, whether you want to call it non or multiracialism. Um, but yeah, so again, this is like, it sounds super negative or whatever, but how do we actually do this? And again, it won't get solved tonight, right? This is something super hectic. I've got my own ideas on how we can do this. Uh, I know Nick has got really good ideas on how we can do this as well with the whole UBI. Um, and I think we need to start thinking creatively about how this can be done. You know, bread and, you know, it's politics of the stomach, ultimately. There's a political scientist slash sociologist, because all of these people are always multiple roles, right? But uh, Stephen Friedman, I think he's at UJ right now, and he wrote a book in 2021 called Prisoners of the Past, The Legacy of Minority Rule. And he also uses a part-dependent framework to look at various things, including state capture. But I want to speak about one of his latter chapters, right? Speaks about an insider-outsider dynamic when it comes to South African politics. And this is all rooted in material and lived conditions. With insider and outsider, we can think elites and non-elites or elites and majoritarian units. But the point here is that politics, because legitimate barriers of entry into the market are quite difficult for a vast majority of the country, politics becomes a career option, 
right? Not a thing of fixing the country in some romantic Aristotelian sense, which, by the way, I doubt also existed back then. But we, we've got what we can call politics of portfolio in this country, right? Because political portfolios give you a salary. And people fight over these things because it also gives you access to deciding where tenders go and this and that. So we've got, we've got you know, polis, politics of portfolio instead of politics of policy. And that's because so many people are still trapped on the outside and we need to get them into the, the inside. Now, I'm not saying communism now or anything like that, but we also don't need to simplify the world into a coin, right? Like things are more complex than a binary either or option. And we need to start thinking creatively about how to attend to these bread and butter issues so that our talk of unity and unifying isn't just lip service, you know, in the spirit of rest in peace, but Desmond Tutu, right? Rainbow Nation, how? I'm going, also going to answer, try and answer with a question and, and ask, uh, democracy, as Tom said, is a Western concept. And if we look at, at Africa, can, can we, and everyone around the table and in the audience, if we answer ourselves, is, does democracy work in Africa? And Winston Churchill said democracy is not the best rule of government or the best form of government, but we haven't found a better one yet. Um, but I, as a young farm boy, who grew up on a farm, got a bit more acquainted with, with tribal systems. So there was uh, chiefs and, and indunas and, and people uh, and tribal land and, and the way as we, some of our legal scholars also had legal pluralism who looks at, at, at traditional African customary law. And I could never understand when I was a bit younger why we could, as a, at a citizenry, um, allow a, a president to build himself a Nakandla for 240 million rand. But then I thought a bit and I remembered, but, but the chief needs, needs a house. So if, if the chief builds himself the biggest house there is with, with the money of, 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 his, of his, his subjects, then yeah, maybe you can stomach it. If, uh, if a chief decides who I'm going to give the cattle to or who I'm going to give the contracts to, then, yeah, maybe, maybe tenders, what we have a look at corruption, is maybe just the way some of Africa has worked for, for 200 years. So the question, I think, is that we can maybe ask ourselves and have a look and see through the lens of tribalism as well with regards to political parties, as Adam said, is what role does tribalism actually play in our politics? And do we maybe have to look a bit better at it to understand why do we, we actually take some of it? Um, and maybe also there's, there's a lot of draft bills about traditional leaders and everything, and I think we have like 18 kings and queens, um, which is very interesting. Um, but maybe that also shapes the way we have a look at how, how our democracy is functioning. And I don't have really have a, an answer to the question, will it really work? Maybe people don't vote because they feel that it's not necessary that someone else will decide for them. So I don't know. Um, but I just, my experience is that if we have a look at the traditional roles if you look at King Shaka and his army and, and gender roles, then we see some of it actually happening today in our politics. Uh, the, the fighting over the king in, in Zululand. I didn't understand why people fight about being a king, but if you see he controls two and a half million hectares of South Africa and he's the largest farmer that there is, then you really understand, okay, listen, this is... This is Ian Moose uh, <laughs> So <laughs> maybe we must rethink democracy with a view on tribalism. Uh, that's just my view. Uh, do you want to say something? That's, yeah. I just want to briefly speak uh, on, on democracy and unity, or for unity. That um, the idea, and I was hoping that my, my colleague would, would still be here just to speak to what he was 
um, speaking pessimistically against. But um, the idea is representation. The idea is you want to have a body of leaders coming together around one table, each representing different aspects of our society. And that is where democracy comes in, because when we speak of democracy, we, we talk about the people governing. We talk about the people having a voice. We, 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 we talk about the people having a seat at the table and a voice around the table. And that's where the, the, the idea of unity comes in, and that, that's why it makes sense to me, and it makes sense uh, that we, we even have a, we, we even here talking about a government of, of national unity. There is a book, um, uh, uh, it's called Self-Determination in African Unity, that looks into different countries within the African context as to which are the ones that have governments of national unity, what were the success factors, and what were the struggles for those that, that struggled with governments of national unity. And what they found was that at the core of the successes were the governments that put the people first, the government that looked at the kind of people that they had, uh, the government that's, that, that looked around and said, um, let's make sure that around the table we've got equal represent representation, which also uh, shows not only the demographics of our country, but we also look, need to look at uh, demographics from, from different sectors as well. So we go beyond demographics from a, from a racial point of view, but we look at even sectors of our economy and we get the right people. In that way, we then get to avoid conversations about let's just tax the wealthy more. and Because <laughs> then you have the right people around the table that get to speak even for the wealthy and not just the ones uh, that are in the working class or the upper class, middle class, or whatever the case might be. But you, you get a unified representation of people that speak for the people that are living in this country. Because we are all working towards that one common goal that I was speaking about which is to make South Africa great again. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Um, Tom, Tom, you have a very good question. I have it for you. Uh, Alma, I will give you a chance for you now, and then we will have another person to help us, and then we will have a sort of... Yeah, Alma. I think most of the people in this room is in, in a part of our lives where we haven't got the, the opportunity or we're too old to go to another country. I don't want to because I love this country. I want to make it work. And I hope I can work with you guys to do it. My question to you is, um, if you decide to stay, why? That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, what do you see as your biggest challenge if you stay? And the third thing is, what is the one thing that you think should change to make this country work? Thank you, Alma. That's a good question. Maybe everybody just a quick answer. Uh, let's start from who, who wants to start. I think that Rachel is fine and we will yeah. speak for the group. Uh, no, Rachel. <laughs> Alma, hi. <laughs> um, I don't know what your second question is, but your first question was, as you want to be, how come? En um, dis iets van waar ek al baie geworstel het en jy het my maal is sê, kom jy uit so vinnig wat jy kan, voor jy kinders kry, maak jy pad uit Zuid-Afrika uit die plek na mekaar en val. En, en ek verstaan hoekom jy het mense met een met ander mindset, ek verstaan waar hulle vandaan kom, ek stem net nie noodwendig saam nie. Um, ek het die voorraag gehad om, om saam met my verlifte reg oor die landbouw te gaan, oor die, oor die tijd wat ons saam was en Elke keer, al kom ons in die kleinste, most disgusting dorpies aan, is het nog steeds vir my iets, daar iets hier van die land wat net vir my voel is deel van waar ek nog altyd was en waar ek altyd wil wees. En, het, en ek kan nie dink dat daar een ander land gaan wees wat vir my die selfde gevoel gee, waar ek die selfde passie sal hee om die plek om my beter te wil maak. Nie. En ek dink, dis wat die verskil is vir my tussen in Zuid-Afrika bly, of in Australië bly, is, hier is die plek wat ek wil beter maak, hier is, hier is die kak waarmee ek sal wil opgehoop sit, in vergelijking met ander plekke. Um, so, ja, dit, dit, dit het net meer pros as cons, soos wat het nou staan, het het meer pros as cons, en ten spuite van wat baie mense sê, is, is dit wat ek sal bly gooi, en hoopelik sal my kinders opvoeding. 
Maybe it's both of them. Uh, anybody? Um, okay. The why stay, I think, is um, everyone grapples with that. And every day when you find your passport by accident in your wallet or in your purse, you're like, oh, wait, why? I think there's this moment where you think, am I the orchestra on the Titanic? Remember the movie, the orchestra playing while the ship is sinking? Um, or are you the new pioneer? You know, this is... This is what we all grapple with, at least in, in my sphere. There's so much change in the landscape of medicine, in the landscape of business, the legal frameworks that allow foreign excises to be dramatically shifted from what they were like in the 80s, mean that I have access to markets all over the world. So the conversation of my money working somewhere else is n sort of a moot point. But what is difficult is to realize that the base currency I work in is virtually monopoly. I think as most of you guys have approached retirement, you can attest to the amount of money that you've saved. Now looking at uh, the shop prices is dismally low. Now I, I, that's a reality for us. And to think about how, how, do you, how do you work around that? How do you work around the ability to say, I've put in my 40 years, but I've got little to show for it. But I, what, what, you can't, what you can't put a price on, I think, is that dignity of life, the dignity and quality of your existence in a community that you can identify with that you can say, this is the mark I've left. You, you drive past something and you feel um, almost a nostalgia about what it used to be, what it is now, and what your contribution has been to that. I think that's a big reason why a lot of us will stay, that, that hope to be able to, to make that change, to make that contribution, and the hope that we are the new pioneers for what is going to be a fantastic South Africa. The biggest challenge is always going to be, um, say, uh, context-specific. In my context, the biggest challenge is meritocracy is not real. Um, at some point in your life, you have to make a concession that actually you're the recipient of favor that you didn't deserve, that you have not worked as hard as your position, your opportunities, and your successes would make you believe. It's a narrow, it's a narrow corridor of people that genuinely have put in the sweat to give the results. You are favored in ways you had nothing to do with. To wake up and have a surname, to enter a room and wear the right shirt, and someone finds your smile appealing, you are all, and we are all, at best, the temporary holders of our own fortunes. And to be able to displace that to the next group of people, the next person coming into the door, is the challenge. People will grab at that chance to, to shine, to be the mayor, to be the president, and use it only to enrich themselves, enrich their colleagues and friends. Um, nepotism is not an Africanism by any means. We, we've not even perfected it. I think we've actually shown we're, we're, we're terrible at this thing. Uh, if you want to see corruption, go to the Swedes. They have mastered corruption. It's, it's not a problem. The problem seems to be that if it's at the cost of progress, if it's at the cost of success and thriving of your community, and to change that, you just need to have a simple thing addressed. If you're, if you're only hungry, you only have one problem. As soon as you're not hungry, you have many problems. And South Africa, as the, the learned colleague pointed out, it's politics of the stomach. This is a lot of hungry people. If we can eliminate the hunger, we can lift up this conversation. It maybe becomes something that you can actually address. You can actually work with it. There's a real meritocracy in every sphere in private sector, but in state, no meritocracy. A matriculant is telling me how to run my, my practice. You know, that's not, that's not a football thing, no. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go to another minute. The answer to the first question is, how do you make a job in Rooibain? This is rare to be able to see it. I'm going to go and look. And the other thing is, come and look at our shared history, what we as a nation, the one here sit, Kijk wat het ons al deurgemaak, um, van wat er stamgroep of etnische achtergrond of historische economische achtergrond. Ons allemaal is op hierdie oomlik aan die sydpunt van Afrika en ons is hier. En ons het al hierdie goed oorleef, die wereld oorloe, die boere oorloe, die armoede. En wat my gevoel net is, as ons al daai kon deurgaan, as ons dit kon oorleef en 
my voorouders moes oorleef het vir my om hier te kon sit. En dit is maar eindelijk maar net een poks. Maar die feit dat ek vandag hier sit en dat ek oorleef het, is een wonderwerk, maar het gee my ook hoop, want het gee vir my, weet jy wat, ons het nie meer die koza oorloe in die 1830s, weet jy, waar ons mekaar sy beeste steel en goed afbrand nie, maar ons het nou ander uitdagings, maar ons is dier al die uitdagings, dier al hierdie armoede en doodslag en tragedie, en ons is nog steeds aan hierdie sypunt van Afrika, en as ons dit kon doen, dan is loud sharing en inflatie en werkloosheid en honger, kan ons seker ook, ook oplos. And so, we're getting now to the sort of the end of the evening, I just want uh, this quick person yeah. to ask yeah. a question. Talk is, excuse talk, talk is cheap, money buys the whiskey. Ons problem is that Africa is, ons het politici wat die land bestuur, En soos jy nou nog gesê het, dit is een professie. En dat het, hulle claim al die dignity wat hulle wil hee. Ons respecteer hulle op baie hoog vlak. Jy weet, ons buig vir hulle ensovoorts. In die meantime betaal ons elke cent van hulle salaris. En ons is die belastingbetaler. So ek sê, soos Malema in die parlement gesê het in Zuma, pay back the money, sê ek, keep back the money. Keep back the money and start doing through business, private sector, distribute the money to the right channels, which is important. We can, ons kan praat oor al die goeie goed wat ons het, oor al die toekomst wat ons het, die jong mense, ek is blij hulle is daar, ek is wees uh, baie jare bezig. Excuse me. Nee, nee, maar ek weet, soos praat nie, ek sê maar net dit, dit is wat ek net sê, dit is die feit daar. Dankie, dankie, ons, ek, ek sê maar net, Pri, die privaat sektor. Dank je, dat is recht so. Dan heb ik net voor een paar jong mensen die jeugd wil ook vraag vraag, en dat van graag hier die jeugd met die vraag vraag. Thank you very much. I have a, a, a question on the upcoming elections. You know, uh, former president Tob Mbeki uh, at his, in his I'm an African speech, which if we want to think about unity is a good thing to go listen at the adoption of the constitution. He said, He's speaking about the beautiful landscapes of the country uh, uh, that is the theater in which we uh, act out our foolish deeds. And now we sit here as uh, young people who are not necessarily full-time actively involved in politics. And now it feels the panel that we watch uh, is the political panel on which we then go and act out our own foolish deeds of the day. With the upcoming elections, and I want to hear the pessimists, this is... Uh, uh, opinion and then any other optimist do we i am an optimist myself but do we hope that the anc wins a slight majority so that they can rather albeit with struggles further at least uh, the current president's agenda without the hurdles or do we take the hit and hope they lose the majority and go through uh, uh, coalitions and the short-term bad that might come of it. Yeah, I think uh, I like this. I think maybe Nico, the last question, then we, we wrap up. Yeah, uh, Mr. Adam. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, that that's a yo like exactly right. Like that. I mean, because it is it is it is that right. I mean. The ANC, horrible, horrific, but an alternative to the ANC is a big question mark, right? And it's like the devil you know, or like, hopefully, maybe this option is good. Um, I, I really don't know how to answer that. I think that there's, there's several arguments to be made here, but, you know, the pulsi pol kind of side coming out, like, without these arguments being based in some sort of empirical reality, we don't really know. If we do assume that local level coalitions are maybe an indicator of how things are going to go at the national level, then I think that we're better off with the ANC, right? Unfortunately. Imagine you've got not only a state that, or, or a government that's incompetent, but a government that cannot form to be incompetent. 
right? So, yeah, that like I think you you ask the question of like of South Africa, right? I mean, this is the big electoral question, um, and I I don't have a it's you know again maybe yeah I'll just keep it up in the air there. Good one. I guess that's one one thing all of us need to think about a bit more, um, even if it might hurt. Ek het een interessante site wat nou opgelist vir jullie het, ek op is die afgekom waar die Research Foundation gedoen het, wat ek om jong mense gevraagd van al die etnische groepe oor wat hulle wil hem gebeur in die volgende verkiesing. En groot meerderheid het gesê, hulle hoop eindelijk vir een coalitie. En dan hoop hulle eindelijk vir een coalitie tussen die ANC en die DAO. Want die ANC is slecht, maar hulle is nie so slecht en hulle voel dat die DAO kan die ANC half net in lijn breng soos een streng school hoof. So... <laughs> <laughs> My gevoel is, ek sal nou die optimist speel, uh, as die ANC moet wen, moet hulle klein wen. En as hulle verloor, moet hulle groot verloor. Uh, <laughs> soos hulle moet soos een baie groot verloor. Want as ons evers tussen naai twee krij, het ons het ons een hevelik wat sy nou nou van gepraat het, van epische proporties. So, uh, ons, ons kan net hoop of vir een klein oorwinning of een groot nederlaag. So, ek, dit is my, dit is my gevoel. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting that the pessimist has now become optimist towards the ANC. <laughs> <laughs> my stance is on one principle. A house divided on itself cannot stand. And right now, the ANC is so divided within itself that even the incumbents can't make decisions because uh, there's division. And so now is an, uh, is an opportune time for our country to get a new leadership. Yeah, I think that brings us to the end. Thanks for your body, Nico. You have the last word. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, you, you can naturally go uh, long here and ask for Ek gaan die bedanking in Afrikaans doen bloot omdat ek al die jong mense gevraagd wat sy Engelse woord vir bedanking en blijkbaar is daar nie een nie. So, 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 um, voor ek mense bedank, net gauw ook een paar opmerkings van my kant af. Uh, jy weet, uh, uh, ek is een trotse Afrikaan en ek het geen probleem daarmee met, met my Afrikaanerskap is glad nie uh, probleem om een trotse Afrikaan te wees nie. En ek is gelukkig het, uh, dat ek het my, my kinders so kon groot maak, dat hulle wil nie eers uit Pretoria uit emigreer. Uh, so, die, die, uh, so ek, ek hoef nie, ek hoef nie, die enigste reden ook om ek soms met hulle moet zoom, is, 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 is bloot omdat hulle te bezig is. Maar, uh, en om al die geleendhede te benut wat hier in, 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 in die land is. Um, verder wil ek sê, ek het, ek het rechtig geen probleem met iemand wat wat Australië toe emigreer, want vir elke ouwe wat Australië toe emigreer, uh, stijg die gemiddelde IK van beide lande. Maar Suid-Afrika, weet, iemand, 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 het, iemand, iemand het die analogie gebruik van een eier, een eier wat van binnenkant af gebreek word, beteken nieuwe lewe. As een eier van buitenkant af gebreek word, het iemand een breekvis. En as hy nie gebreek word, dan word hy vrood. So, jylle jeug moet dier en tyd hierdie land van binnen af uitbroei om nieuwe lewe te kan gee. En jylle is baie gelukkig, want jylle gaan nog die tyd beleef wat ei ei ontslaag gaan raak van al die politici en boerikrate. I have a, a, a question on the upcoming elections. You know, uh, former President Thabo Mbeki uh, at his, in his I'm an African speech, which if we want to think about unity is a good thing to go listen at the adoption of the constitution. He said, he's speaking about the beautiful landscapes of the country uh, uh, that is the theater in which we uh, act out our foolish deeds. And now we sit here as uh, young people who are not necessarily full-time actively involved in politics. And now it feels the panel that we watch uh, is the political panel on which we then go and act out our own foolish deeds of the day. With the upcoming elections, and I want to hear the pessimist's uh, uh, opinion and then any other optimist, do we 
I am an optimist myself, but do we hope that the ANC wins a slight majority so that they can rather, albeit with struggles, further at least uh, the current president's agenda without the hurdles? Or do we take the hit and hope they lose the majority and go through uh, uh, coalitions and the short-term bad that might come of it. Yeah, I think uh, I like this. I think maybe, Nico, the last question, then we, we wrap up. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Adam. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Um, that, that's a, your, like, exactly, right? Like that, I mean, because it is, it is, it is that, right? I mean, the ANC, horrible, horrific, but an alternative to the ANC is a big question mark, right? And it's like the devil you know, or like, hopefully, maybe this option is good. Um, I, I really don't know how to answer that. I think that there's, there's several arguments to be made here, but, you know, the pol pol -sci kind of side coming out, like, without these arguments being based in some sort of empirical reality, we don't really know. If we do assume that local level coalitions are maybe an indicator of how things are gonna go at the national level, then I think that we're better off with the ANC, right? Unfortunately. Imagine you've got not only a state that, or, or a government that's incompetent, but a government that cannot form to be incompetent, right? So, yeah, that's like, I think you, you asked the question of like, of South Africa, right? I mean, this is the big electoral question. Um, and I, I don't have a, it's, you know, again, maybe, yeah, I'll just keep it up in the air there. Good one. I guess that's what, one thing all of us need to think about a bit more, um, even if it might hurt. Ek het een interessante feit dat ek nou opgelist vir jullie het, ek op is die afgekom waar die Research Foundation gedoen het, dat ek een klomp jong mense gevraag het van al die etnische groepe oor wat hulle wil hee moet gebeur in die volgende verkiesing. En groot meerderheid het gesê, hulle hoop eindelijk vir een coalitie, en dan hoop hulle eindelijk vir een coalitie tussen die ANC en die DAO, want die ANC is sleg, maar hulle is nie so sleg, en hulle voel dat die DAO kan die ANC half net in lijn breng, soos die streng school hoof. So... <laughs> <laughs> My gevoel is, ek sal nou die optimist speel, uh, as die ANC moet wen, moet hulle klein wen. En as hulle verloor, moet hulle groot verloor. Uh, <laughs> soos hulle moet soos een baie groot verloor. Want as ons evers tussen naai twee kry, het ons, het ons een hevelik wat sy nou nou van gepraat het, van epische proporties. So, uh, ons, ons kan net hoop offer klein oorwinning of een groot nederlaag. So, ek, dit is my, is my gevoel. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting that the pessimist has now become optimist towards the ANC. <laughs> <laughs> my stance is on one principle. A house divided on itself cannot stand. And right now, the ANC is so divided within itself that even the incumbents can't make decisions because uh, there's division. And so now is an, uh, is an opportune time for our country to get a new leadership. 